counting equation and excel inventory and inventory subsidiary ledger get ready and some coffee because we're getting to the accounting foundation the accounting equation with excel first a word from our sponsor yeah uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or you can just construct your own worksheet as we go or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though there's three tabs down below example practice blank example in essence the answer key the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less excel formatting the blank tab the one we will be working on started with a blank worksheet but are basically continuing with a template to enter our transactions adding to that template as we go as needed Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. We're going to be dealing with the entering of the beginning balances in particular with regards to inventory. Inventory having the added problem of tracking the units of inventory, not just the dollar amount requiring a sub ledger. So our overall project will be that we have these beginning balances we are imagining are coming from the prior accounting system or possibly just the business that we started with maybe not a really official accounting system which we are now going to be starting as our beginning balances as of the beginning of the year note that i could just enter this entire thing as a journal entry and that would be correct for my beginning balances easy peasy and i can move forward from there but no I would have a problem depending on the types of beginning balances that I have. Each of these beginning balances having its own issue, some of them being more complex than others. For example, the checking account could have outstanding checks that we have to deal with, which will throw a wrench into the problem when I get to the bank reconciliation. The accounts receivable is going to have sub ledgers based on who owes us the money. Now, we might not have accounts receivable in some businesses. You might be in a service business where you get paid or in any business, you get paid at the same point in time, therefore don't have to track accounts receivable. Therefore, you might be able to do just a journal entry in that case, given the absence of that account. Inventory. If you have inventory, that's our point of focus this time. You have to figure out how you're going to deal with the tracking of the physical units of inventory. Are you going to have a perpetual inventory system designed to be recorded when you purchase as well as when you sell each item of inventory or a periodic system, which might be used outside of your accounting software like a QuickBooks or Xero, which will be adjusted periodically based on the physical count. That's what we'll deal with this time. Remember, though, if you have the equipment, you're still going to have a sub ledger you have to deal with with equipment, which might be in an external software, such as in the United States tax software. Accounts payable has a subsidiary ledger for who 
uh, you owe the money to, similar to accounts receivable, having a subsidiary letter ledger for who owes you the money. By the way, uh, software might not call it a subsidiary ledger. They might call it whatever report that they want to call it, but I'm going to call it a subsidiary ledger in general, being any ledger that's giving more detail about one or multiple basically accounts within the general ledger or normal accounts reported on the financial statement, in our case, the accounting equation, or, or on a trial balance. So some accounts will be easier, like a visa, you'll still have to reconcile, but it'll probably be easier than a checking account because you're not going to have outstanding charges typically, and then so and loan payable and so on. So we're going to deal with inventory at this point in time. So if I have this inventory number, I need to think, okay, what about the actual physical units of inventory? How am I going to track that? I'm going to imagine we'll make a subsidiary ledger to do that. These are going to be the actual data that I'm going to imagine comes from our prior accounting system. I'm imagining we sell guitars and these are just generic kind of guitars that we're going to sell and we have the cost of them. We've got the sales price of them and then we have the number of them on hand to give us the total dollar amount which should add up to that 2,896. Now you're also going to have to determine how you're going to track the inventory if you sell large items of inventories like cars or tractors or something like that you'll be able to identify each physical unit of inventory as you sell it tracking each unit individually but for many types of inventory we have categories of inventory all of which will be the same same type of guitars in each of these categories therefore for each category i'm going to have a flow assumption assuming that what it, that they picked one of those guitars that were sold i don't know which one exactly therefore flow assumptions will typically be fifo and first in first out that is and weighted average and so that's going to be the idea here all right so we're gonna we're gonna go over here and say all right the journal entry for this transaction is straightforward i'm going to put the beginning so let's go to the balance I'm going to put the beginning balance on the books. I'm going to make this date field a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to say as of 1-1, one, one, we're going to say we put the beginning balance for inventory on the books. So, so we already purchased it in our prior accounting system. Now we're going to be converting that to our current accounting system as of the end of last year, beginning of this year, putting the ending balance, which we saw was 2896. Now there might be rounding involved, but that is it. Now the journal entry is going to be fairly straightforward because I'm just going to put it on the books as an asset, which would be inventory. So that's going to be going up for 2896. And then the other side, remember, I don't want to have one journal entry recording all of this stuff, but rather my strategy is to record an increase to each of these accounts. The other side go into some kind of equity, in our case, owner's equity, because it's a sole proprietorship. If it was a partnership retained earnings, you might put it into a clearing account like beginning balance and then adjust the equity accounts at the end if there's more complexity in the equity accounts like a partnership for example because you'll have to allocate it to each of the partner capital accounts but at the end of the day the equity will wash out and be correct in total and then you'd have to fix the equity breaking it out in whatever way you need to such as if it was a partnership by partner if it was a corporation by retained earnings versus the capital accounts breaking up between original investment in essence capital accounts and uh, the retained earnings, the accumulation of revenue over time that has not yet been distributed in the form of dividends. Okay, so that's going to be so. So that's going to be our strategy. So the other side, I'm just going to dump into the equity account. So do, 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 owners equity. We'll just have that go up. Now, notice in accounting software. You, it might be a little bit different to do this because what you're actually going to do in accounting software is put the units of inventory on the books. And when you put the units of inventory on the books, as you assign a cost, if you're, if you're talking about something like a QuickBooks, if you say, hey, look, there's one or like three units of inventory of this guitar, 3004. Well, in order for the system to put that on the books as inventory, 
they're, they're going to have to record a transaction, right? So a transaction will be recorded. So instead of you entering it with a journal entry like we kind of did here, instead, you'll put all of the beginning balances of inventory on and QuickBooks will, will record something or some accounting software, whatever you're using, will usually use a data input form, which might be like a purchase form or an inventory adjustment form that will then record the journal entry for each line item of inventory. In our case, we're gonna put the full amount on the books with the journal entry and then adjust the sub ledger to give us the backup or detailed information. So let me show you what I mean. If we go back on over here, I'm gonna sum this up in our, in our well, let's put zeros across the board. Zeros across the board, zero, 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 zero. Now these, these ones should be white. I'm gonna do some adjustment, some tinkering to the template as needed as we go. As I said, we would do home tab font group. Let's make that white within there. All right, and then the equity, oh no, control Z, equity, and nothing's on the income statement yet. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back over here. Let's do our summary. So the assets are gonna be equals the sum of all the green accounts, dark and light green. Enter, the liabilities are gonna be equal to the sum of all of the red accounts. We don't have any, well, that's good. And then the equity, I'm gonna make this, these also, I would like to make them white. So I'm gonna adjust the template as we need, as we go, making that white for the lettering. And let's make this white for the lettering. And same with this one, if we may, por favor, white on the lettering. Okay, and then this is gonna be equal to the sum of the equity. Du -du 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 all right, there we go. All right, so we're back in balance. So now the assets equal the liabilities plus the equity. That makes sense. So we have inventory on the books. That's assets. If we were to liquidate the company, we wouldn't get that money unless we could sell the inventory, right? Uh, and then that's how we would liquidate at that point in time. All right, so that's going to be the idea. But now I'm going to go to uh, the subsidiary ledger breaking out by the units of inventory in our case the guitars so we set up this general subsidiary ledger uh last time and now we're going to start to populate this thing all right so i'm going to say we have a, we have an elp and i'm just going to say this is the beginning balance beginning balance and i'm just going to put the beginning balance in the ending inventory because we purchased it in the past in the prior accounting system and any data from the prior accounting system will go to the prior accounting system to deal with. We're gonna put it in as of the current point in this time. But going forward, we're gonna have the purchases here, which will then have to be summarized in ending inventory. Sales will go into this column, which will then be summarized in ending inventory. That's gonna be the process. All right, so we're gonna say then, we're going to have one unit, a cost of 400 here. And, and that's coming from our, our worksheet. Uh, we have the Epiphone Les Paul, which is an ELP, costs 400. The sales price is 500. I'm not going to deal with the sales price here because the sales price is what we're going to sell it for. What I'm dealing with with this worksheet is what the cost is. So the sales price will be important and would be necessary to input into accounting software like a QuickBooks so that if using a perpetual inventory system, when you sell the inventory with an invoice or sales receipt, for example, at a cash register or for accounts receivable, then it will record the, the proper sales price, which will record the proper amount increasing, increasing revenue uh, and accounts receivable if it's an invoice. And then it will know the behind the scenes, what will not be on the invoice or sales receipt, but the system will know if we have it set up properly, the cost and the unit that will be sold, in this case will be the $400, which will automatically record the decrease to the inventory and increase in the expense account of cost of goods sold, the net impact on assets being accounts receivable going up minus the inventory that went down, and then on the income statement side, the revenue going up minus the cost of goods sold that's going down. You also have the added complexity of sales tax possibly or usage tax, 
which would increase the accounts receivable by the tax and the other side's going to to the liability. So we'll get into the recording of those transactions later. Right now, we're just concerned with the cost. All right, so let's go back on over and put that in play here. So the cost is, so that means the total is gonna be one times 400. So there's that, how come that did? Oh, and then I'm gonna copy that down. I'm gonna copy that down. So I'm just gonna say this equals uh, the one above it. And I'm going to copy it all the way down so that I get the balance and this bottom number so that it pulls over to my summary over here. So that's how I'm going to have it tie out. Okay, and then underneath it, we have an uh, this one, an, an, an EPSP. So I'm, I'm once again just going to say this equals, let's say, the beginning balance. And we're going to imagine here that we, ha we have one unit at $480 cost one guitar at 480 for the EPSP one times 480 is of course 480 we're just going to say equals the one above that and I'm going to copy that down so that once again it's down in the bottom balance which is going to tie into our number up top so now we have inventory on the books of 880 which consists of one of these guitars and elp at 400 cost one of these guitars and epsp at 480. all right and so let's continue with this we're going to then say the next one is going to be an epr we're going to abbreviate as and say that that's going to be once again i'll just say the date is the beginning balance as of the beginning of the year and this time we've got an ERP guitar. I'm gonna say we have one of those and they cost $440. So this equals one times 440. This equals the one above it. We'll copy that down to the bottom. So that number right there is pulling in to our total. So now let's make this a little larger so I can see it. We're now at 1,320. All right, let's go to the one below that. So now we're going to go down here, doot, 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 right here, beginning balance for the DUC uh, is going to be equal to the one above it. Hold on a second. I think this one, I'm going to rename this one. This should be an EPSH, I think, is what I wanted to name it. And so that's, and so, okay, so then we're going to say it has a beginning balance of two guitars two inventory items at they only cost 320 so this is going to be two times 320 and then once again we equal the one above it i'm going to copy that down to the bottom bup, 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 bup. 640 is going to pull in to our number up here so that looks correct all right so let's do the next one ultra vez one more time we're gonna say this date is gonna be once again, the beginning balance. And we're gonna say the units here, will have three of these, the GI USA guitars, 304. So this equals three times 304. This equals the one above it. And we're gonna copy that down. Doot, 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 doot. So this will pull into our beginning balance number, hopefully. And then one more time, uno, vase, mas. This is going to be the D-U-K. We're going to say this is going to be equal to the beginning balance. And it's going to be one at $24. This is a ukulele. That's why it's so much cheaper. And this is going to be one times 24. This is going to be equal to the one above it. Copying that down to the bottom number, which is pulling in to our ledger. Let's make this one red just so we remember that's the key number that maybe red's not, maybe I'll make it green. That's the key number and let's make it green and white because I wanna say, hey, look, that's the number I need to go to that's actually pulling into our summary that will tie out to our GL general ledger or account on our accounting equation worksheet, which is kind of like equivalent to our trial balance. All right, so then, so this adds up to the 289, uh, uh, 
nine six and my total over here was two eight nine six so why did this not work because i i put conditional formatting for it to equal zero so i should do one more to subtract it and then uh and then double check it that way so because now what's going to happen is i'm going to have to update this every time uh let's say let's try let's try the let's try this i'm going to pull this over here i'm going to pull this over here and i'm going to say that this needs to be this needs is the one that needs to be zero so this is going to be equal to Let's do this. I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, pull this over here. So I just cut and paste that over here. And then, cause that pulls over the conditional formatting. I'm gonna go into it and copy this whole equation. I need to copy the equation. Cause if I copy the cell, it'll change the relative references. So I'm gonna copy that equation, go out of it and put that here boom so now this one here and now i have the conditional formatting over here now this time i'm just going to say this is going to be equal to this number minus what's in our ledger which is the the inventory now this is kind of an issue because every time i change this inventory number i'm going to have to readjust my check figure but that's the way it is here so that's going to be zero so there's my check figure it ended up zero and it has green for our conditional formatting that looks good let's make this amount black and white so black and white so that's my my check figure number eh, maybe i'll make it green would it be better to be green green and bordered maybe <laughs> all right let's do that okay so there's our there's our check figure number and so now this ties out so we are, we're at zero now we have our different inventory items on the books you can see how tedious this was to do and so again the idea is going to be if you did this in accounting software setting it up in accounting software like a quickbooks can be complex and sometimes the accounting software doesn't have the the as much complexity uh, sophistication as is needed for certain types of businesses which is one reason why you might have to level up to more customizable software in some cases inventory being one of those issues and if you have a smaller amount of inventory or you don't want to do as much customization within the quickbooks system or possibly you're tracking inventory already on another system like a shopify store or something like that then then you might not want to track it within quickbooks you just want to basically track the inventory in whatever system you are using possibly in excel or some other software and then maybe do just a periodic adjustment into quickbooks as needed at least yearly so that you can properly do your taxes if you're in the united states but possibly updating it more often than that at the end of the night at the end of the week at the end of the month right at the end of the quarter or something like that so you can get a proper perspective of your financials uh, on a periodic basis and how would you do that you'd count the inventory apply your flow assumption record the proper amount of cost of goods sold uh, at that time and the reduction of inventory all right so that's going to be our general idea here let's see if we could do a spell check checking the good old spelling of this thing i'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that uh uh do you want to continue Depree, okay ignore that balance ignore those okay it says i'm good all right i thought that would be okay so well that's good